Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how MIDI routing works in Stagebox. Let's take a look. So by default Stagebox listens to all MIDI inputs that are connected. So if you only have one keyboard connected you probably don't need to change any settings. But let's say you've got multiple keyboards, you need to be able to tell Stagebox which keyboards are connected to which sounds. And you do that with the MIDI input selector here. So in this system I've got three MIDI devices connected. And if I click on the input selector here, I can see that I've got FLK Lashnet, which is my 88 note controller here. And I've got Mio, which is an iConnectivity MIDI interface, which is connected to my S49 keyboard here. And I've got a launch control, which is just over here. So in this song, I've got a Moog synth type sound, and I've got a Rhodes type sound. And I want to connect my S49 controller here to the Moog, and the 88 note controller here to the Rhodes sound. So all I need to do is click on the Moog tab and then in the input selector go to Mio because that's the iConnectivity device that this particular controller is connected to. And then on the Rhodes tab I select the FLK Latchnet. And now when I play this keyboard I've got the Moog sound and when I play this keyboard I've got the Rhodes sound. And you can set up as many different controller keyboards for as many different sounds as you like. So let's take a look at the MIDI settings and see what options we've got. You can see that under MIDI input devices I get a list of all of the MIDI devices that are connected to my computer. So some of these I've got enabled and some I've got disabled. And when you disable them all that means is that they won't show up in this list of available options for your input controllers. Now down here there's a button that says create new virtual MIDI device. Now why would a virtual MIDI device be useful? Let's say you've got this same dual keyboard setup and you've programmed a hundred or so songs with this setup. And then at some point you decide that actually instead of this controller I want to use a different controller. What you'd have to do is go through all of those hundred songs and change the input selector from being whatever this is connected to to whatever your new keyboard device is. Now if you create a virtual device it means that you can select the virtual device as your input to the sounds and then if you want to change what your physical controller is, you only have to change it in one place, which is in this virtual device window. So as an example, let's make two devices and we'll call one of them lower and we'll connect that to the Latchnet 88 controller and then we'll create another device that we'll call upper and we'll connect that to the iConnectivity device, which is connected to the S49. So now when I'm programming songs, instead of connecting directly to the MIDI interface, I'm going to connect to the virtual port. So now that Moog sound I want to be on upper and the road sound I want to be on lower. And that still works great. And I do that with all these other sounds. So I've got a sound here where I want a piano to be on lower and a bass to be on upper. And then a sound here where I want the roads to be on lower and a pad to be on upper. So now let's say that instead of this S49, I want to use this base station controller. So I'm going to plug this one in. I'm going to unplug the S49. And now all I have to do is go back to my MIDI settings, find the upper virtual device. And instead of connecting that to the iConnectivity device, I'm going to connect it to the base station 2. And now all of these sounds will have the upper patches connected to my base station 2. And that can save a huge amount of time if you've got a lot of songs programs and you want to change controllers. So the last things to look at in the settings are the global mapping options. This lets you assign a MIDI CC to control things like the song navigation and tap tempo. So in this example I've selected CC114 as previous song, CC115 as next song. And on my launch control over here I've mapped these two up and down buttons to be 114 and 115. Now usually to make this work the MIDI controller needs to be set up in momentary mode. So now when I press the up button I'm going to navigate up through the setlist and the down button will go down through the setlist. 
So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.